very much still in good health and I'm not going anywhere. The, the, the purpose and sort of what I'm going to be talking about is writing because I teach a lot of writing. Um, but one of my early memories of writing probably comes at this time. I was literally in third grade. I think my teacher had asked us sort of to write about our favorite colors. One of my so early, like, another early memories, thinking of me, probably even before the, the Guns N' Roses shirt, uh, is uh, thinking about my grandmother in writing, who was a bit like the grandmother in Coco. Uh, she sometimes might have been trying, when trying to instill discipline, she might have done things that others might interpret as sort of punishment in some way. Sure. But a subtitle I thought of as I was putting this together, sort of I can think of like lessons for my sons through my father about writing. I'll throw the writing still in there. Um, of course, I should introduce my sons to also show you who my, sort of my intended audience might be. Great, stay well. Writing is hard. All right, thank you, well that was My good old grandma, trying to teach me to be a better writer, was like, I want you to fill this page with your name in cursive. You know, which sounds like, I guess, discipline, but it also felt like punishment. I oh. like, but keeping that idea, writing is hard. I really did actually learn a lot from my father's example. These are actually pictures of uh, some of my father's writing. A lot of his stuff, like a lot of writers, he has a lot of unpublished stuff, you know, sitting there. And I think one of the reasons I like to still focus on the fact that, like, my father, who is not someone great writing success. The way I'm able to still think about it is because he really did love writing and it's the way I think a lot of people love writing who don't necessarily identify as writers and even as a writing teacher I'm always trying to say like yes we all write like yes you can write it's good to write so I think that's part of maybe the reason I still see some inspiration I was sort of thinking about when I was a kid I would literally go into we lived in this in a really small house, it was like two bedrooms. We had this back room where my father had his computers and stuff, and it was like one of those things where it sort of had this like uh, glass door separating. And it was one of those things where I'd kind of be this kid going into the kitchen, maybe get some food, and I would see my dad sort of in the back room there, sort of like typing to himself. And he'd either be like kind of laughing or sort of like muttering some, or sometimes like maybe like seem a little frustrated. And it was like you know years this kind of thing would go on, and it was like. It's like what is he doing? Every now and again, I'd be like, Dad, are you talking to me? And he's like, no, 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 I'm just writing, just writing. And so it was one of those things, not until I think I saw that quote, I started thinking about like how someone can sort of become so wrapped up in their writing and sort of feeding this monster, as sort of Baldwin talks about, that I began to understand sort of how consumed people can become when they're working on any kind of like artistic endeavor. And so, and that, was, that is once again why it's hard, right? Writing is thinking, you gotta sit down, you gotta be in your seat, and do all the fun stuff. One of these ideas I think I kind of carried away from that is the idea of like not being daunted. And, you know, especially after I died, I think it was one of those things that I, I could see as like, you know, not being afraid of achieving some goals that I would set out for my set. You know, knowing that you're gonna like take up the opportunity and then saying like, okay, there's a certain amount of work that goes along with this. To demonstrate the numbers I broke down, I spent three years contributing to the reader while taking some grad classes. In those three years, I interviewed six people a week for 52 weeks, which comes out to 936 interviews. I put plus because I also did a cover story. I did two cover stories where I interviewed another 120 people between that. So um, I too have collected a good number of rejection letters. I think I think I created a, I created what a, a boomerang. It doesn't really work very well because it doesn't go through all the pages there, but there are in fact some, some of those that you can see there too. And I think if you see my door, it's covered actually in things either that like, like that's a, that's my book right there, that's a collection that I'm in. It has all these things I've actually, all my successes and you know, my wall I actually has some letters and things from editors because part of that whole thing of like, you have to you know, celebrate all your rejections and embrace the rejections, but you also have to celebrate your accomplishments too. So